Today's video is going to be about Bitcoin gold and the relation to altcoins and what happened at the fork and we can kind of uh, process this information and try to use it in a couple weeks when the next fork happens. to do to get your Bitcoin gold but if you're on exchanges most exchanges do the work for you they are going to um, set up Bitcoin gold wallets and make sure that you have your Bitcoin gold in there that matches what you had in Bitcoin at the time of the snapshot on De October 24th 2017 so, going forward, after the snapshot took place, people started selling off instantly because they no longer needed to hold their Bitcoin to get Bitcoin cash. The snapshot was taken. The data is in the system. They know how much Bitcoin you had at that time. So now people are selling because when Bitcoin was about to split, people cashed out of their altcoins to get more Bitcoin so that they could get these free Bitcoin gold tokens when the chain split. You only have one shot and one chance to get them for free. And, well, not for free, but um, for free when you buy a Bitcoin or the same amount of Bitcoin. So, people um, in huge numbers were selling off their altcoins and buying Bitcoin. So in the markets, you see that reflect. You can see that people were buying Bitcoin, driving the price up before the fork, and then after the fork, the price went down. But as I was predicting, this wouldn't have a huge impact on the market. Yes, it's going to go down a bit Bitcoin, but then it'll rebound and go back up. Same thing with Bitcoin Gold. 
what I'm assuming is going to happen is it's going to go down in price around the time of its implementation. A lot of people are going to be selling, but also a lot of people are going to be buying because they're going to see the prices going down, seeing everybody get out and having fear and this is a good time where the smart people will get in when the uncertainty is high and the, the drama and emotions are flowing and you can catch people um, when they're acting on emotions. And so there's two types of people on the markets, three types actually, uh, three types of trading. Third one is in people because it's bots. We have people on the markets that have been doing it for years professional traders that have been trading on the stock market, people in the financial industry. These types of uh, whales and sharks on the market are the ones that we're seeing manipulate the price. They can almost uh, do insider trading and this is happening a lot with cryptocurrencies where we get pump and dumps. It is illegal but it's happening where you see all altcoins that are worth nothing. Um, these ICOs coming out, they'll go almost straight up. <clears throat> um, and then they'll dip and everyone will sell off and then they'll be basically worth nothing. And <clears throat> nobody's gonna buy back in because it was uh, a big, um, it was a joint effort with groups of people doing this and they're not going to buy back in because they got their money out of it they're moving on to something else um, you can learn to start to see when that's about to happen because you'll see little dips where pe these whales are buying it up but they're trying not to get noticed and so you'll see little dips um, in the market and that is them getting ready to do this huge pump and dump they're holding their coins holding their coins Get, gathering them up and then all of a sudden they buy um, they, they make the price low maybe by selling a bit selling some and then they buy they buy a lot and they drive the price up once the price goes up a lot of people see the price is going up and that drives a huge wave of people buying where this is the other type of person the beginner trader that follows the trends they are buying after the price goes up and they're selling um, after the price goes down. So we can see in the statistics that 90% of people lose um, on their trades. They lose their money over time. 10% of people um, are actually consistently gaining and these are the big whales that know what they're doing and so you have a huge disadvantage being a beginner trader and coming into these markets so that's why you can take advantage of things like bots and platforms lending platforms where you lend your money to these whales that know what they're doing and that can manipulate the markets by their huge numbers and that will make you a shitload but on your own you're basically trading blind so these um, these people that are buying after the price goes up make the price go up even higher and so they um, the ripple effect of these these insider traders, big whales, buying up a lot, it ripples out and then everyone sees it. They might be on Bittrex as the highest gain of the day and then everyone starts buying that coin. It's talked about, it's talked about, why is this coin uh, going up hundreds of percents? But by that time you bought it, it's already too late and now it's going down. And now the whales are selling and you just lost a lot of your money. And this is a pattern that you'll see play out over and over again when you're a beginner trader 
And sometimes you have to go through it to learn it. And you got to look back at what happened, what you did, and what put out a plan of what you could do better next time. So we saw with Bitcoin Cash <clears throat> that right when it came out, it was worth a, a decent amount of money. It was worth um, the most it was going to be worth for a, for a long time. And so if you sold when it first came out, you... Uh, <clears throat> you did a smart thing. People that held, they lost half of their value over time. And the same thing is going to happen with Bitcoin Gold. <clears throat> you can buy into the Bitcoin Gold at its bottom if you think it's going to do well and if you, tr if you have faith in it and you understand what it's trying to do. Uh, don't buy these coins just because they're low and don't buy them just because they're high. So, it, it's a tricky thing when you're starting out. But that's why you gotta use the resources available to you. The, the YouTube videos and things like that. <clears throat> so, almost every margin trade I've been opening recently, I've been gaining on. Because when I first started margin trading, I was losing my money. And so now, I only do a margin trade if I know 100% the price is going to go up or down. I don't do it out of, oh, I think it might go up. Oh, it's probably going to go up. Um, oh, it'd be nice if this went up. Oh, it's been up before, so it should go back up. No, you do not guess when you're margin trading. You're leveraging what you have um, by like 10 and you don't want to risk all your money on speculation. So, what happened when this snapshot took place was some exchanges, they they know how much Bitcoin gold their users uh, would have had at that moment because it goes by the wallet you're holding at that moment. So if you're holding a wallet on that, on that exchange at the moment uh, of the snapshot when the fork when the snapshot for the future fork was taken, these exchanges opened wallets so that you could trade on your, your coin that, that you'll be getting in the future. So a lot of these exchanges like Bitfinex have not even got your Bitcoin gold yet, but they're allowing you to trade it because they know, they're confident that they're going to get it. The Bitcoin gold software and code has not been completed yet. Uh, they're trying to figure out the replay protection issues and there's some sort of bounty right now for whoever can, can write that code and solve that issue. Um, and there's one thing you can do if you want to protect yourself from this replay protection. And so, <clears throat> what replay protection really is concerned about is say you have one Bitcoin on the original uh, chain and then you are matched that one Bitcoin on the Bitcoin gold fork chain, the, uh, the new chain. If you spend your Bitcoin, there is a possibility that you could also be spending your Bitcoin gold and that whatever you do to your Bitcoin will replay on the Bitcoin gold chain. So this is the current issue and why it hasn't been uh, released yet. And there's been a lot of pullback from people in this community and people that were supporting Bitcoin Gold aren't anymore and some of the developers are moving on to new projects. So um, it does look overall like you don't want to stay in this. It can be kind of uh, disappointing because you were expecting more than you got um, so you might want to buy up lots of Bitcoin gold cheap and then sell if it goes up higher which was what I was considering and I did buy some Bitcoin gold um, instead of selling it when it, it first came out um, on Bitfinex um, on the 25th but looking at it now 
putting all of the information together, I do think it is a good idea to sell at least half because then you you profited from this fork. You got something for free. You don't want it to go down to to dollars and then uh, you sell it for one dollar. So it's good to sell half, get a hundred, a couple hundred bucks out of it. Now you're happy. You really can't set your, your standards too high. You can't celebrate too early in cryptocurrency. Um, basically, whatever happens, go with it and say, maybe. I, I just made $50,000 overnight, it looks like. That may be, but we don't know until tomorrow what tomorrow will bring. I could lose all that money tomorrow. So you don't celebrate too early. Um, until you cash out, you can't really say you made money. So what we're seeing now with the altcoins is the altcoins are doing a rebound. They were, were, were doing very, very poorly for the past couple months, to be honest. Altcoins have not been getting the gains that they're used to. Maybe it has something to do with all these new ICOs coming out and people are putting their money into new projects rather than old projects. Um, this is most likely it. And so, personally, I've got out of a lot of my old altcoins that I bought a year ago. Um, if, they're, if they haven't made me money in the past year, if they've lost, I'm getting the hell out of there and I'm moving on to a new project that has more hope more uh, more hype and more interest from the the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency communities. We saw Ripple go down uh, a week ago because of the the hopes high hopes people had for the conference and then the conference came out and people were disappointed. This is a pattern we're starting to see where the hype um, is more than they can actually follow through with. So, with companies that promise something and they they follow through early, or they they um, produce more than they promised, better results. These are the companies you want to trust in and put your money into because they're conservative, and we know. Um, that when you're you're not conservative, when you're overexcited about something, that it usually uh, creates a bubble that has to burst, and that's what happened with Ripple. But if we look um, a week later, what do we see? So Ripple went down to about 19 cents, uh, maybe a little bit less, from 20. I think the max was 29 cents to 30 cents on some exchanges during the beginning days of the conference. <clears throat> the last day of the conference it did very poorly. People realized there's no big um, announcement that's going to be made and they sold off the Ripple. But it went down to 19, maybe 18 cents. Now it's back at 20 cents. Uh, I think we're going to see it go back to 21, 22 cents. So when these things happen and big sell-offs happen, uh, it doesn't affect the whole market. It, it really can't because not everybody is acting on emotions. There's a lot of bots on the market. Not everybody is in cryptocurrency following it daily. So a lot of people buy it, hold it, and don't, don't think about it for, for a long time, for months. And so we don't see this constant rat race and these constant buys and sells from all of the Bitcoin holders. And so we see it from about 20% 20, 20 of the market, if that. So we know that when there's a big sell-off, that's going to rebound pretty quickly. And if you buy at that low, you're going to make money. And so what would have been smart to do was when everybody was selling their altcoins and buying into Bitcoin, making Bitcoin go up, you should have sold your Bitcoin and bought altcoins. 
do the opposite of what everybody else is doing. And then when uh, Bitcoin would go down because everyone's selling off after the snapshot and altcoins go up, you would profit immensely because you could sell your altcoins and buy back into Bitcoin and uh, you make money on both ends. So with that being said, that's Bitcoin gold. There was a, a hack the night of the snapshot where Bitcoin gold website got DDoS attacked and it was down. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of resistance and hate towards this. There's a lot of politics going on in the community. These forks we're seeing come out. Um, I think they're just going to get more and more um, persistent. We're going to see more of them. They are a way for people to to get all of the marketing um, benefits from Bitcoin, but create a new ICO, create a new uh, coin, but at the same time sell it to everybody that already owns Bitcoin and that already knows about Bitcoin and that uh, knows of the name Bitcoin. So if Bitcoin is being talked about like crazy by everybody, if Bitcoin has a fork, that's going to be talked about more than a random ICO coming out. And so this is an advantage. People are taking advantage of the fact that the community, if enough people get together, can do whatever they want with the Bitcoin code. People are getting greedy. People are getting, are starting to complain. Um, when people notice that they can get their way, they start um, pushing things. They start pushing the limits. And so we're going to see this happen. We're seeing it with the ICOs. We're seeing it with um, uh, chain splits where people are going to keep doing this until something stops them. It's something big happens until it goes too far. Um, so if we have a couple ideas here at Crypto Living for, um, for blockchain based projects. And we don't want to wait until the blockchain um, and ICOs have been uh, created um, to be so stigmatized that people think of them as scams. So if anybody is interested in creating a, uh, an ICO, a blockchain based company, I have a few ideas that I, I know would succeed. I just am not a coder myself and so I'm going to be um, meeting um, coders and looking for people to um, to work on these projects with me. So um, I'm going to be creating some meetups in my area for Bitcoin. I suggest you do the same. Let's get together as communities and um, see what we can learn from each other and create together. Um, there's one thing that's been sticking in my head to that if you are trying to create a new company, a new business, a new idea, it's a lot easier to partner partner with an existing company to do that. So we're seeing all sorts of companies scramble right now to get involved in blockchain. If you have an idea, um, it would be nice if there was a way to pitch that idea uh, to these companies easily. Uh, there's social media which makes it easier than it used to be years ago, um, but this is one idea for an ICO and for a platform where you can um, put ITs together, almost like incubators, where people that have money and are looking to develop, looking to create a blockchain project to their company, can partner with people that have ideas, people that are very visionary, people that are um, open-minded, and that see the possibilities, people that see problems that need solved, can partner with these people that just want to get on board, that want to put their money into it, invest in it, um, and get involved. So um, please hit us up with a link. Uh, we'd love to do an interview with, uh, with you. Um, we love to talk to you, email you, follow us on Twitter, and um, we'll catch you next time. Subscribe and hit the bell. I'm Crypto Keith, and I'm out. Off to the markets. 
We will share Bitcoin news in today's headlines and update you when something big happens in the community. Pretty soon you'll be able to say, I am crypto living. And I got here from what I learned when watching Crypto Key. Cheers. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell below. You don't want to miss out on our new videos.